What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Premier back with another video. I know it's been a while uh, and before we start I just want to say I hope that everyone is doing well and is in a good space emotionally, mentally, physically. Uh, I know there have been a lot of unfortunate events over the last few months in addition to the stress of just navigating in this industry of cybersecurity. Um, dealing with the imposter syndrome, studying for exams, learning new concepts, etc. I hope everyone is in good spirits and is doing well. And with that being said, let's jump right into what I've been up to these last couple months. So, as some of you know, my last video was an overview slash review of the Practical Network Penetration Tester exam by TCM Security. And in that video, I pretty much went over my thoughts about the preparation, the skill set required, as well as some tips to pass. And if you've been in my Discord, you know that my immediate goal after that was to land a job in the ethical hacking space as a red teamer or penetration tester. Well, that video was posted about six months ago, and that's exactly what I've been up to since then. And to give you all a quick overview of what I've accomplished, um, I have passed the OSCP exam by offensive security, I've passed the CRTO exam by zero point security, and I have officially landed my dream job for my dream company as an offensive security engineer. Now, I won't go into too much detail about my OSCP or CRTO experiences during this video, as those will be their own separate videos. However, I will talk about my experience in the industry since acquiring my PNPT. So let's take it all the way back to February where I had just acquired my PNPT. Uh, immediately after acquiring the certification, I did what anyone would do in this space and revamp my resume <laughs> and began applying to every remote and local pen testing opportunity I could find. Um, I pretty much just wanted to see if I was qualified, right? Like where did my resume match with the rest of the industry? Um, I'd say throughout the month of February, I put anywhere between five to seven applications in and pretty much just waited for the recruiter to contact me. Now that process alone takes anywhere between two to three weeks, just depending on the company, right? In the process, it could take longer, but in between that time, I took it upon myself to actually uh, involve myself in some hack the box challenges, try hack me's, you know, do a little bit more studying um, as well as networking. Now, this is a very important part. I'll go into more depth later in this video, but using social media platforms is like, an invaluable skill right now right taking advantage of twitter taking advantage of linkedin discord i mean the community is essentially like at your fingertips like no pun intended um and you know you'd be surprised I, i've gained so many friends mentors mentees and now even colleagues <laughs> And before I knew it, um, March had came around, I had received callbacks from about three of the jobs, two were junior and one was actually a principal or a senior level position. Uh, each of the interviews consisted of about three rounds or more um, and I made it to the second of each of those opportunities but never to the final. Um, I would be completely lying if I said I wasn't discouraged in any way, um, but I kind of took the rejections as like a learning opportunity and decided to actually reach out to the employers, you know, personally, right, to see what I lacked. Um, and this is probably one of the best things you can do in this industry is actually be receptive to criticism. Uh, I knew I wasn't the best candidate, right, or at least that's what I was telling myself. Um, I was trying to transition to offensive security, which was essentially a completely new realm for me. Um, so getting an interview alone was like all the motivation I needed to kind of keep going um, and keep applying. Luckily, uh, being that this community is like the most, you know, helping and caring, I guess, community to say the least. I don't know, I can't think of a word right now. <laughs> um, most of the le leaders that I reached out to were helpful. Um, I was able to receive like some helpful information about the areas that I lacked. Uh, and I was able to, to essentially prioritize those as like my study topics. I knew someone would bite eventually. Um, and so, like I said, I kept applying. I put in an additional three applications uh, throughout March and just waited, all right? I attempted to sharpen my skill uh, in all those areas that you know were mentioned to me in those rejection letters. And I worked, I worked, I worked. Um, before I knew it, more interviews came along and so did more rejections <laughs> and I essentially rinsed, washed and repeated like that process, right? Until I could, you know, essentially articulate, not only apply, but articulate some of the skill set I was learning through my studies. Um, I also began writing down some of the questions I was being asked, right? And something else like the, the, 
most important thing, which brings me into my next topic, was like the one question I was being asked, unfortunately, I guess because of, you know, where I was in terms of an experience level was or referred to my OSCP, right? Do you have your OSCP? Do you plan on getting your OSCP and when? Um, so I knew I had to get my OSCP. <laughs> now, God works in mysterious ways. Um, now is the perfect time for me to recognize Blacks in Cybersecurity or BIC, um, which is an organization that essentially provides resources to those that need them. And um, BIC actually had a Red Team cohort program going on during that same time frame, which essentially provided a sponsorship to selected candidates for specific uh, Red Team oriented exams, right? So like Pentest Plus, PNPT, OSCP. Um, the, I, I've thanked the leaders of BIC multiple times, right? But I'll thank them again during this video. Thank you. Um, them sponsoring our OSCP exam pretty much added an additional layer of motivation to pass it, um, as well as get in the industry, right? I didn't want to let them down and I didn't want to waste their money. <laughs> uh, so I studied for the exam for about two months, right? In between uh, that April and May timeframe. Um, I took it in mid-May and I passed it. Um, it just added more fuel to my my dedication. Uh, I submitted more applications naturally, right? And I just played the waiting game. Now, during that preparation process, um, I did begin learning the true importance of networking, right? I had developed my LinkedIn. Um, I connected with a bunch of smart individuals within the industry and pretty much studied their habits, right? Uh, what were the new CVEs coming out? What were, uh, what were they researching, right? What were the important topics to study? Um, and during that phase, I had all actually decided to take it a step further and uh, received some mentorship from someone we all know or all familiar with uh, known as Heath Adams, AKA the Cyber Mentor. Now, for those who don't know, Heath actually offers a mentorship service for a fee. Um, it's about $100 for 30 minutes of his time, and you can essentially schedule it and ask him whatever you want to ask him, um, within reason, of course. Um, now, if you're someone like myself who's just looking to transition into the industry and need a little bit more sense of direction, um, Heath is probably the one of the few, if not the only individual, reputable individual that provides this as a service. Um, so rather than complaining about spending $100 for just 30 minutes, right? Some of that, some of you are probably thinking that, I took that as an investment opportunity, right? I'm investing $100 into myself to ask a, you know, well-established, well-accredited leader about how I can get in the industry, right? Um, and so I won't go too granular on what we talked about, but he pretty much provided me with a lot of topics to think about. Um, some of them I will be sharing in videos to come, but overall he gave me a better perspective about the industry and how to approach it, um, which ultimately added like an additional layer of dedication. Um, I took most of Heath's advice and began writing blogs, right, on my exam experiences, um, all of which you can find the links for, by the way, in the description below. Uh, I created a Discord to develop my own community and so on. Um, Heath had pretty much explained that it was very important, and I'll, you know, I'll relay this to you guys watching. It is very important to receive your battle wounds in this industry, right? And take that as you will. <laughs> But in addition to that, beggars can't be choosers, right? Where I was in my career, Heath told me I had the skills to get a job if I really wanted one, but I'd probably be taking a pay cut or not be with the company I preferred and respectfully so, right? I was not a very experienced ind individual in the offensive security community. And so, you know, just naturally I knew I would that would take time. Um, and it's true, I was very selective on who I wanted to work for. So take my experiences, obviously with a grain of salt, but I probably put more pressure on myself or stressing myself than I had to. Um, and like I said, I understood what I was experiencing, um, what I was experiencing rather was normal and that there were thousands of other individuals, you know, that wanted to be an offset and work for huge companies. So <laughs> I had to respect the process. So um, yeah, I took more notes for my interviews and I knew um, that the next weakness that I had I knew the exact topic and I pretty much just ran with it, right? Um, and that goes into my CRTO experience, right? You get asked a lot about command and control frameworks in interviews and a lot of offensive security interviews or good wins at least. And because I had not had like a deep familiarity with, with any, um, I decided to take the CRTO by Zero Point Security. Um, it's a well-respected exam um, that's gaining way more traction than it had initially. And it really goes into the 
the granular you know details of what a command and control framework is all about so hats off to uh, rasta mouse and zero point security for putting such a well you know compilation of content together um because it truly helped me you know not only gather a better understanding of what c2s are capable of but also get a job <laughs> number two don't go for a certification, go for the knowledge, right? Allow the cert to just come naturally. Um, I think in this industry, there's an issue with like acquiring cert, cert hunting, like if there's a term for it specifically, like comment that as well. But I see people focused on certifications and the credibility or uh, perspective of credibility that they think comes with them rather than the knowledge that, you know, that certification path encompasses. And I hope I didn't say too much within that statement. Um, those who get it will get it. <laughs> Number three, um, be honest during your interviews. You're not a wizard, no one knows everything, and it's okay. In fact, you'll actually find that the potential employer will appreciate the fact that you're honest enough to just say, hey, I haven't studied this. However, if I do receive this job opportunity and this is a weakness of you know your specific team, I will make it my priority to go and learn about this topic. It's as simple as that. Number four, Active Directory exploitation is great. I know that's where the industry is kind of focused on right now as it relates to specific exams, but web application exploitation is king. You will be asked about web applications uh, during any decent interview and nine times out of 10 have to apply, you know, a certain attack during an actual job engagement, right? So make sure you're studying the OWASP top 10 and understand what is happening during an attack process from both the client as well as the server perspective. Number five, I feel like this goes without saying, but know your common ports and services as well as the attacks associated with them, right? Make sure you know more than just what the curb roasting attack looks like or is, but actually what the curb roast service does from like an authentication perspective, right? And what certain tools like Crack Map Exec, Impacket, Bloodhound, etc., are and how they work under the hood. Number six, be patient. I received way more rejections than I did acceptances, <laughs> and I pretty much took those rejections as lessons. I reached out to those employers professionally and just asked them like, hey, what is it that I need to work on, right? And from that point forward, it was up to me. And last but certainly not least, this is probably the most important rule of all, give back to the community, right? And interact. There will never be enough information out there like regarding a certain topic a certain concept or methodology and that's something i'm still learning to this day no matter how elementary it may seem every day someone new is going to join this industry and wonder the same things that you did so look at that as an infinite opportunity to kind of give back right whether it's writing a blog creating content helping people in discord servers just find a way to give back <laughs> and so that's pretty much it uh, if you're still here i appreciate it per usual i hope this video served its benefit uh, and if you care at all about what my future holds obviously i plan on growing in my new role um, i do have a certification that i'll be sitting for sooner than later you can join my discord to find out more information on that uh, and finally i'd actually like to create more cybersecurity related content so please i need you guys' help comment 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 join the discord and tell me personally whatever it is um let me know what it is you guys want me to talk about or what reviews you want me to do etc etc uh if you have any questions i'm a message away we have a great community going on in my discord so far it's filled with cybersecurity professionals and students that are always learning and always just willing to assist so that's all for today guys i hope you guys enjoyed the video peace